I'm out here on a gorgeous walk here in Northern California, totally getting inspired. Spring has sprung. And I was thinking, hmm, I think making some floral resin coasters would be a great idea to bring in the spring. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today. So stay tuned. Hi, welcome to Liz's Artisan Shop. I'm Liz, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make floral resin coasters. I love counterculture DIY. They have a great epoxy. I am using their uh, artist resin today to make these coasters. There's many different resins that you can choose from, and I'll post a video uh, in the future on which types of resin to use for what projects. But for today, I'm gonna to be using the artisan resin, which is a one-to-one -one ratio. And today we're using also their geo-designed silicon mold. Now you can use many different molds for this project, but I just love using this mold. It is the perfect size for my cups and gives me enough working room to produce beautiful petals. And like with any resin project, I always wear a respirator and vinyl gloves to protect myself. All right, let's get this party started. Five ounces by volume of hardener first in the cup. And then I'm going to do five ounces of resin. I like to put my resin and hardener in two separate smaller plastic containers. I think I got that at Walmart. So when you start mixing this, you want to make sure to scrape the sides and the bottom of the cup. And the directions say to stir for three to four minutes. This is obviously sped up. You want to stir a little more slower and carefully so you don't produce bubbles. After stirring for the three to four minutes, I'm separating out three different cups for my colorants. These cups are three ounces and I'm filling them up about halfway. So it's about an ounce and a half uh, for volume there. Then in this cup, I'm mixing two different chunky glitters. This is like a triangle silver chunky glitter and this is called Onyx. Both are by Michael's brand Recollections. Hmm. I think it's called Recollections. You know, whatever Michael's brand is called of glitter. And then I'm getting a nice mix. Uh, you want it really nice and chunky so that when you put it into the mold, it stays together. And now I'm using Casting Craft. Uh, there you go, there's a picture of it. You can buy this on Amazon or Michael's. You can get it in a lot of different stores. It is difficult to work with. Um, I used a push pen to try to get the opening a little bit wider. I ended up later just cutting off a big chunk of the tip again because it just was not coming out. And here I have an ounce and a half of resin mix. And so I'm going to put about, I think I used seven drops. Whoops, I don't know what happened there. Seven drops and stirring it with a clean stick. Next, I'm using three colorants from Arteza's Mica Kit. Uh, there's 60 count in the whole kit, and I got this kit for Christmas. I'm still exploring, um, you know, the different colorants that it comes with, and they all have different effects. Like, you'll see later that this wasn't quite enough uh, pigment for the project. Um, so there I was mixing emerald green and moss green together, and then uh, next I'll be mixing the seafoam green. And I am just been so into teals and greens lately. I know teal's been popular for like 1 billion years, but I am not tired of it. Okay, and now I'm pouring these into disposable piping bags. I'm gonna post a link here uh, in the description and I'll show you a picture on Amazon. They're really nifty for this project because you can just toss them when you're done. And the 12 inch bags are what I use. You can use bigger ones, but you're only using a few ounces of resin, so the smallest bag usually is the best fit. All right, now here we go, prepping to pipe. We're not a bakery, folks. We're resin artists. Okay, you just want to cut a teeny weeny tiny bit off the tip there, and I place it upside down then once it's cut in the cup. Next is the white resin, and I'm going to cut the tip off the bag in secret. I don't know how to hold things in the camera frame. There you go, it happened, that's proof. 
and here uh, is the seafoam green. And there, I'm just trying to give you up close, up close and personal of how much I cut off. Now I'm pouring clear resin into each of the four molds. Ideally, I probably should have hit this with some heat at this point before I filled it all the way up. So if you just do like a third to half of your amount, do the heat gun and then the rest and then the heat gun, it helps to reduce micro bubbles, which I did get, uh, which I'll show you later in this video. And now I'm just using my heat gun to get rid of any bubbles that are in the resin after I poured that first layer of clear. So don't buy those sticks with the curvy sides because they're impossible to mix with. All they're good for is to prop your table up or pan up or table. They don't prop tables up. Uh, if they're on level, I learned that the hard way. Just get the straight edge. So now I'm just adding chunky letter to each of the mold uh, in the center. If you drop some, which I usually do every single time, you can just use tweezers or toothpick to fish it out or to push it towards the middle. So here's where it all goes sort of horribly wrong. Ideally, you're going to take your first color and you're going to do a petal design, which you see here I'm trying to um, attempt four petals with three different layers uh, or two different layers. And then rotating to a different color. And I started out strong. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but you'll see here, especially at the white, oh my gosh, what is, what's happening? I, ideally, the plan was to go in between the colors with the white, and I am just having a hard time. It's difficult to do because once, once the party starts, there's no stopping it. That resin is coming out of that bag, and you have to adjust to the flow of it, and... I attempted to fix things, and then when uh, this resin came out way faster than I expected, so it just sort of blobbed uh, in the middle of each, fl each flower there. So I'm like, hey, why not just put some in the middle? That wasn't part of the plan. And here I am just crying into my resin cup, wondering what I should do. Do I keep going? Do I scrap it? Because this is not how it's supposed to look. So just add a little bit more. That's that's what I did there. Because more is better. And, you know, why not? I have more resin. So maybe that'll fix it. Oh, let's add more glitter. Because that'll fix it. More glitter fixes things. By the way, um, don't buy this heat gun. I'm not even going to list it in the description. Because... It does this thing to cool off at the end when you hit off, it blows for five seconds more. And when you're dealing with resin, you want it to cut off right away. So there's my rant about my heat gun. Okay, so up close and personal, here's how they turned out. My husband says it looks like someone smashed a fairy into each of my molds there. Thanks a lot, Andy. So obviously I'm upset. So I decide, bam, let's just do this again. So these molds I got off Etsy. I'll put a link in the description. I'm using Crafter's Choice uh, Turquoise Teal Mica Powder. Uh, being a soap maker, I have a lot of Crafter's Choice Micas. And then this is Evergreen, Evergreen Green Mica Powder. And the plan is now to mix these two together. And I'm just going to do a white and a colored resin and try to keep it a little bit simpler and this time I'm going to add more mica than I did last time. Um, and in this batch, uh, these molds are about three, three and a half per. So I ended up mixing up about 16 ounces uh, of resin, which was a little too much. So in these cups, I went ahead and filled them up about two thirds. So that's probably two, I'd say two and a half ounces, maybe almost three. And then now I'm going to add 12 drops of the craft and craft whatever it's called <laughs> craft and what is it called I showed it in the beginning you know what it is the white stuff mixing the white stuff in and now doing the piping bags again two colors should be a little bit easier to work with and there goes the white the white stuff 
And I'm just using the same glitter mix uh, that I used before. Same thing, gonna pour in the clear resin into the molds first. Again, I should have hit that with my heat gun to get rid of the micro bubbles, but I forgot. And once again, I'm using the heat gun that will remain nameless to get rid of, you know, those bubbles. And chunky glitter in the middle of each mold. Again, you can use tweezers or a toothpick to, you know, move the glitter around if you make a mistake. All right, moment of truth. Here we go. Four petals with two rows. No, three rows. It looks like I have a good start there. Feeling kind of hopeful. Looking pretty good. I don't know what I did different, but it's just working for me this time. Oh, well, thumbs up. And now I'm switching to the green teal mix. And here you go. I'm in between. In between the white lines is what I was going for. And, you know, th there's like a kabillion different ways that you can do these flowers. I just like to start with the four petal, three row design and do the colors in between. Now I'm just taking my toothpick, straightening out the lines. There's just so many different techniques you can use uh, to make different effects with these floral coasters. Uh, YouTube has just a great number of informative videos out there. And I'm just using my tweezers to kind of put the glitter where I'm wanting it to go. And now I'm taking my heat gun and I'm just moving those petals around to get those colorants to blend and to pop any more micro bubbles that might be in the resin. It's amazing to watch what happens after you've heated it up and blended it like this, just how it shifts uh, shape and patterns as you let it sit. Okay, here we go. It's the next day. I let these sit for overnight, probably about 16 to 18 hours. And the big reveal, this is the first batch and uh, that's not bad. I actually like the pattern that, uh, that the three different colorants made. You, I mean, it's definitely not what I was going for, but honestly, I'm making these for my own personal use and I'm, I'm digging it. Those, I love that, that green. Wow. But yeah, it's not exactly the petal formation I was going for. I'm glad that I made another batch, but you can see, um, based on the design, just how it turned out. And I, I think they look neat. Now, again, I'm still careful unmolding these. It's been about 14 to 16 hours, but Counterculture recommends a full 24 hours uh, before unmolding and 72 hours before it's considered cured. Now, I, with all of my coasters or other, other resin products, I let it cure a full week to two weeks before I ship anything, just because I want to make sure that things are hard and uh, I don't have any breakage or bending with them. Another way to prevent micro bubbles, like you see there, is to make sure that your mixture is between 70 and 75 degrees, and you can achieve that by warming it up in hot water. Uh, just being careful not to incorporate water into your mix, because that'll uh, destroy your resin. But, um, you know, your room may be between 70 and 75, but your countertops are usually cooler, which produce um, a cooler temperature in your resin and hardener. And my molds are nice and clean. They demolded beautifully. I love Counterculture's uh, silicone molds. And now the second batch. Let's see how these turned out. The suspense. Okay, well, I probably, well, first of all, I love the colors. Definitely glad I went with just two and mixing the teal and green together. You can see more of the petal designs. Um, definitely awesome 3D effect there. I'm thinking that I mixed a little bit too much of the white, which makes um, 
kind of those blobby marks. It's <laughs> the only way I know how to put it. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not hating it. Uh, definitely looks more like a flower uh, with some definition. And here is the fourth one. Again, a similar pattern. And man, I love that teal and green together. That is such a pretty mix. So after I was finished with all of them, I realized I had extra resin and I grabbed one more mold. I turned the camera off when I made this one, which I regret because, oh my gosh, it turned out the best out of all of them, I would say. And uh, what I did different is, th you know, thinking back on it is I squeezed so much out of the bag because I wanted to fill up the mold as much as possible. So I think that's the key in reflecting on these coasters is I would have cut the bags a little bit more so more of the resin would have come out. And isn't it the way that when you aren't trying and you're just in a hurry and you're just getting it done and you the camera's off and there's no pressure, it's going to produce the best one. But definitely, you know, take your time and play with different techniques and you're going to learn how your resin responds to your micas or your colorants and that's part of the fun of it all. And here is an example of some coasters that I've done in the past. This was a five petal design that I rotated between a purple mica and the white pigment. And then the next was again, a four petal design. This is an example of the bumper pads that I use on some of my coasters. Uh, Amazon sells this variety pack for about nine or $10. Um, it's a great pack and I highly recommend it. And I just want to give a shout out to Janie, my friend who sent me this apron, which is incredible. Janie, thank you. You're amazing. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more informative videos like these. Thanks for watching.